Hey everybody, here we are at Cabbage Throw Farm with Dean and Emily, and uh, we are going to be checking out the Power Ox, specifically the spider uh, cultivator uh, setup along with the torsion weeders. And so we just brought it off, dropped it off today. And Thank um, you. yep, you're welcome. And uh, right now it's set up just kind of straight on, haven't put in the soil yet, so I'm not quite sure where we're gonna go yet. But the key thing with, the, with this setup is the spiders up front allow you to do some hilling or some cutting away from the plants. Uh, and the torsion weeders allow us to do some more in-row weeding. And so we're gonna try to get these things both tuned in, uh, probably try a few beans and maybe a few uh, cabbages here. That sounds great. So looking down here first, um, Dean, we got the spiders up here. Um, the spiders can be oriented uh, like they are currently, or you could swap them around so that they're more aggressive. You see these teeth here? Uh, right now, as they're cutting in, it's in the less aggressive uh, position, okay? As it's moving forward. If we were to turn them around, and let's do that here, just hypothetical. Okay, so now let's say they were traveling this way. As those teeth now are going in, they're going to be more aggressive, okay? I, I don't think with your um, crops, we need, to, we need to go in that position. We're going to keep it how we brought it, um, which, oh, sorry, You're Mr. Okay. Mr. Bean. We'll leave you over there. Um, but we're going to then, we're going to work in this position, and it's going to uh, cut away. What we like about the spider specifically is that unlike a, like, a, like, a, like an actual hiller disc that's uh, cupped, it will typically throw ribbons or kind of cut and then throw a whole slab. The spiders allow it to mulch and weed a little bit better. So that's one thing we like about the spiders. So we're not going to see as much of a wave of right. soil. It's right. Gonna be, uh... It's going to be more of a cultivation. And, and then the more aggressive that you want to be, to, you, can, you can throw more soil but it'll be cut and diced a little bit better than a typical uh, hiller disc. Can you show the angles of those discs if we wanted to? Um, so you said there's one way to make it more aggressive, which is turning that, the, so that these teeth are, are yes. you know, engaging mm -hmm. with the soil that way or the other way. So how would I play with the angle of these uh, spider discs just to make it more or less aggressive? Yeah. So, so here we're gonna, basically at this point now, it's just we're gonna run it in, with, in this position with, with orientation and simply by giving it more angle this way, you're gonna, be, you're gonna cover more ground and be more aggressive and throw more soil as it's working through. Okay. Or we also may cut away. So as you mentioned earlier in our brief conversation as we're walking through the cabbages, the, the big thing about, the nice thing about hilling is we can both hill up and then tear back down. Yep. And so we, we can change that orientation with these uh, and, do, and do both of those. So we're gonna give it a slight uh, angle here. Uh, when I'm doing this, I, I, I typically like to start off with just tightening the one, because I know I'm gonna probably change the other one pretty soon. And... We're gonna do is we're gonna raise the gauge wheels. Yeah, somewhere in there, one below the. What I'm gonna be looking for here is just to see if my depth feels about right uh, for the torsion weeders and the spiders. Just to kind of give us a first, are we in the soil? Are we doing the right thing first? Okay, and clearly a little bit aggressive there, aren't we? The question is, do people hill beans? Our primary objective here is to weed control weeds. Yeah. And so, uh, again, I think we're, 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 we're going a little bit too much here, but there's no, uh, especially with how leggy these guys are, they can handle a little bit uh, around them. Yeah. So we're gonna back these off just a little bit. I'm just gonna <laughs> kick. <laughs> Okay.
To be honest with you, if I was here by myself, I would say that looks good. Yeah, well, I, I, I think that actually is looking pretty good already. So now I want to get these guys tuned in. So uh, I think what, so I think for the spiders, what we may do is we may open them up just a tad bit. Although that's not bad, is it? No, it's not. And like you said, I mean, the support of a leggy plant is also, yeah. you know, a positive of this, this whole thing. So because I think we can afford to put these, uh, these torsion weeders on there. So let me talk about the torsion weeders now for a second. Uh, the torsion weeders are another in-road in -road tool, cultivation tool, kind of like the finger weeders where we're able to get closer to the plant. Unlike the finger weeder, these are working more below the ground. And they're working in the sense that this little uh, tine section down here cuts like a knife um, right below the surface and vibrates a little bit sideways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to angle them in a little bit more so that they are cutting a little bit more and dragging rather than just letting things slide. So we're going to create a little bit more of a drag effect. Typically the torsion weeders, they say that you can have them uh, crossed over about an inch like that at some point uh, it, with, with crops that are fairly uh, well engaged. And what they'll do is, is as they enter the soil, they'll work their way out. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we moved them in some, we're gonna start there for the next round and see how things go. We could move in more, but I think that's probably what we're gonna stick with. So I'm gonna be using this as uh, a first or second cultivation pass. So even a week after transplanting, you would say with the torsion weeders, they should be touching the way they are. Uh, what I would do then, I would like to keep the angle the same here. You might move these whole brackets out about another inch okay. so that they're just out a little further. Okay. So uh, we brought the two out here and because the setup is mostly in 15 inch row spacing, we noticed the gauge wheel uh, is running right on the next row here. So uh, because the whole system, the aux tools are so modular, uh, we can easily change this around by just loosening these uh, clamps and then we will do a quick switcheroo. I got the machine. And it's so light that it's just falling away here. The key principle bound around the power ox is that the center pin is almost right over the axle. If you look at the line of the axle, it's right here. And by having that center pin almost over it, if I'm going down the row, which you've probably already experienced, and you're correcting yourself like this, notice the tool doesn't move. And that's what we want. We want the tool to stay the same. So as you're trying to correct yourself as a little bit of a curve comes up, you're not moving the tool sideways. If this pin was back here, Every movement I make up here would move the whole tool sideways. So the only thing is sometimes you want sway, but sometimes you don't want too much sway. So when you get to the end of the row, if, if this was too loose, this whole tool would fly flop. So you just, just kind of want to know how much you want and you can always adjust it there. In what scenario would I want sway? Well, right now you want a little bit of sway. You see how there's a little bit of a sway? But if you have too much and you get to the end of the row and that flies, even farther over, then that's too much sway. Okay. So it's just kind of a matter of making sure you don't have too much, right. usually. We just uh, moved in the spiders, uh, so they're angled. We uh, moved the gauge wheels on the inside so they don't hit the, the beans on the outside. We adjusted the torsions in a little bit and we're gonna give it a fire up and see what we go from here. Sounds good. Looks nice to me, man. <laughs> it looks really good to me. We could move the spiders out just a little bit if we wanted. To, th um, to throw less. Th just so they're not throwing quite as much tight, which I'm inclined to do as we go up to the cabbage, we might want them a little farther away. Um, if by tight, you mean just like not as like a... Uh... Yeah, or maybe we'll straighten them up just a little. Let's, let's do that. Let's, let's do that for a second. Okay, let's try that. 
Notice they're not very tight yet so that I can do some minor adjustments before I tighten it down with the wrench really good. All right, so we ran through with the spiders and the torsion weeders a little bit here. And um, a couple things to note when we ran through, notice I didn't have the power ox revved up very high. Yeah. Um, you know, some of these hilling and light conditions, you wanna have it idled almost down. Um, and I think that's different than some other two wheel tractors where you're used to having it have to, for it to work, you have to have it revved up. Yeah, with the finger weeders, I'm, right. I'm going. But but this one, maybe you're just gonna work through a little bit slower, at least in this first cultivation. So what do you think? I love it. Yeah, this is exactly, you know, how I envision this to work. Um, yeah, a, a mechanized hilling uh, on single row. Okay. So very, I, I, very, very pleased. I, I will say yeah. you have some really nice soil. Yeah. So we do need to make sure that we're all clear on that, that not yeah. every soil is the same. Yeah. Uh, you've done a nice job with adding some organic material, but you're also, the, the structure of the soil is very nice. You did say when we came in it was a little bit wet, but you'll notice that it's, it's not bad, especially right where, where we're at. Because you've, it's drained enough, it's, it, it feels like we're doing pretty good. So you wanna give it a try here now? Sure, yeah, I'd love to.